A fan or exchange type in RabbitMQ routes messages to all the queues bound to it ignoring the routing key. When a message is published to a fanout exchange, a copy of this message is sent to all the queues bound to it. This makes fanout exchanges an excellent choice when you need to broadcast messages to all your consumers. In this video, let's learn about RabbitMQ fanout exchange, how to set it up, how it works, and when to use it. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos on .NET, Cloud and DevOps. This video is part of my RabbitMQ series and thanks to AWS for sponsoring this video. I will use Amazon MQ, a managed message broker which supports ActiveMQ and RabbitMQ to host my RabbitMQ instance. However, you can be using any of the different ways that RabbitMQ provides to host your instance. Before we learn about the specific exchange type, let's first understand what an exchange is. If you're familiar with what an exchange is, feel free to skip to the next section. Exchanges are message routing agents and are responsible for sending messages to the different queues. An exchange routes the messages to zero or multiple queues based on the exchange type, the routing key, the header attributes, etc. Typically, when we think about a message-based application, we think about a producer, a queue, and a consumer. The producer produces the message, also known as the sender, and the consumer consumes or receives the message, also known as the receiver. The producer sends the messages to the queue, and the consumer picks them up from the queue. However, in RabbitMQ, the producer does not send the message directly to the queue. The producer sends the message to an exchange and the exchange is responsible for routing these messages to the different queues. So the exchange basically sends copies of these messages to the different queues that are registered with it. With the exchange in between the producer and the consumer, we need to introduce two more concepts, which are binding and routing keys. A binding is what connects an exchange with a queue. You can think of this as a link or a rule that instructs the exchange on how to send or distribute these message copies to the different queues. So as you can see here, between the exchange and the queue, we would be specifying a binding. So the binding is what connects this exchange to these queues. You can have one or more bindings on an exchange which points to the same queue or different queues. A routing key is a message attribute that is used by the exchange to route the messages. Now this depends on the exchange type and we will see how this is used. Now a part of the routing key is also used when we specify a binding which is what the exchange uses to determine how to use this routing key on a message attribute. Now that you understand what an exchange means in RabbitMQ, let's dive into the specific exchange type, the fanout exchange. A fanout exchange copies and routes a received message to all the queues that are bound to it. So in this case, the routing key is being ignored, even if you specify any of them. So when using a fanout exchange, you would ideally ignore sending these routing keys on the message and also specifying it on the binding. Fanout exchanges are great use cases when you want to broadcast updates or publish system-wide notifications. Like let's say if you want to send a notification to different mechanisms like email, SMS, chat, etc., you can use a fanout exchange. So all you need to do is drop in a notification message and have different consumers for each of these update mechanisms and use the appropriate ways to communicate for these notifications. So in this scenario, when a producer sends a message to a fanout exchange, if we have more than one consumers bound to it, so in this case, we have two bindings where it goes to two different queues. This message will get copied into both these queues. So if you have more than two queues, it's going to copy those messages into all those queues. And each of these consumers can pick up the message and process it in the way that it requires. Let's see an example of this from our .NET application. In Rider, I have a solution already open, which has a send and receive application. This is the same application that I have been using in my RabbitMQ series. And if you're new to this, I highly recommend checking out my previous video on the direct exchange type where I created the exchange and then use that to send messages. But I'll quickly go through that. So inside our send application, if you go to the send.cs, you can see we set up the connection factory where I set up the connection details to my Amazon MQ RabbitMQ instance and then create the connection and create the channel. So once we have the channel, we can use the exchange declare method 
to declare an exchange. Now in this case, I was creating a direct exchange, which we will now change to a fan out exchange. So let's rename this to be instead of weather direct, we can make this as weather dash fan out. So I'm purely using this naming mechanism so that we understand what an exchange type it is. But you can use a different name which matches your domain requirements. Now since this is a fan out exchange, let's rename this as fan out exchange type. Now once we have the exchange created, we can use that to send the messages. So all this is doing is getting a message from a console application. It is getting in a routing key. Now in this case, we are safe to ignore the routing key, but we will leave it in here to see what happens even if we specify a routing key. So we get the message and the routing key and we send it to this channel. As we can see, the send application knows only about the exchange and knows nothing about the queues. So if we switch over to our receive application where we have the receive set up, Similarly, we have set up the connection details to my Amazon MQ Rabbit instance and then setting up the channel. Now, once the channel is created, we declare the queue and set up the binding. So in the queue declare, we are setting up a new queue by taking in the queue name from the console so that we can create multiple instances of this when we run different worker instances. We also then take in the routing key and set up the queue binding. So in this case, you can see we set up the queue binding on the queue name and also on the exchange type. So let's fix this also to be on the fan out exchange. So we are binding to the right exchange. So let's specify this as fan out. And we are also specifying a routing key inside this for the binding. But as you know, in the fan out exchange, these routing keys are ignored. But we will see what happens even if we specify them. Now, if you don't specify any routing key, it's just going to bind with an empty routing key. So let's also fix this to be weather underscore fan out. Now, once the binding is set up, we have a new eventing basic consumer, which is defaultly provided from the SDK. And we use that to consume the message and process them. All we're doing it is writing to the console message. So let's run this and see this in action. Let's switch over to a console. And let's navigate into the send application first and let's do .NET run. Now this is going to run the sender application and it is going to ask to enter the message. So this message is going to be sent to the exchange to also start the receiver so that we have one application looking for these messages. Let's navigate into the receive folder and let's specify .NET run. Now we have the receive application running and it's asking for the queue name. So let's assume that this application is for a weather API and it is now publishing weather alerts whenever a critical weather warning or an alert needs to be issued. In this particular case, the consumer is for a specific state, which is going to be NSW, which stands for New South Wales, which is the state where Sydney is there. So let's navigate and create a new queue and let's specify blank routing key, which means it's going to simply bind it with string.mt. So now it's waiting for messages. So in this case, if I was to send a new message, so let's say test alert, and it's going to ask for the routing key. So let's ignore that and that message is processed by this consumer. Now, even if we were to send test alert one with a routing key, so let's specify test as the routing key. Even in this case, you can see the message is getting delivered to this consumer, even though we specified a routing key. So in this case, the routing key is completely ignored and this message is broadcasted to this queue. Let's create another instance of the consumer. So let's navigate into the exact same folder. Let's navigate into the receive application and let's specify .NET run again. Now this is again going to ask a queue name. So in this case, let's specify the queue name as QLD, which stands for Queensland. Now this is going to ask for a routing key. So let's specify the routing key as Brisbane, which is a city inside Queensland. And this is also now waiting for messages. If I send a new message here, test again. Now this is going to again ask for the routing key. So let's simply ignore that. And you can see that this message is getting processed by both these queues. So you can see the test again message here and also in here. So this message was delivered to both the consumers and it was getting processed successfully. Now if I send again, so let's specify 
test1 and even if we were to specify a routing key, so let's specify the routing key as Brisbane, this message still gets delivered to both these queues. So you can see test1 in here and also in the other consumer. So in all these cases, the routing key is getting ignored even if you specify it on the message itself or on the bindings and the message is getting broadcasted to all the consumers. Now let's navigate into our Amazon MQ in the AWS console and let's navigate to this Amazon MQ instance. So in here you can scroll down and go to the RabbitMQ console using the credentials that we used to create the exchange and let's go into the exchanges section. Now here you can see that there is an exchange that's getting created which is the weather underscore fan out. It also specifies the type as fan out in here. This is the direct exchange that we created in the previous video and you can see that this is of type direct. So let's navigate into the weather fan out exchange and here you can see that there are two bindings that is getting set up. One is for to the QNSW and the other one for QLD and it specifies a routing key even though this is getting ignored. Now you can navigate into the independent queues and see these queues as well. So if we were to navigate into NSW, you can see the details of that in here. And this also says the number of consumers that's right now pulling messages from this queue. So since we have only one consumer, this shows only one instance. Now if I navigate back into the console and if I was to create a new console instance for the same queue NSW, so let's navigate into the same folder and let's go into the receive application and let's specify .NET run. Now this is going to start another instance and let's point it to the same queue which is going to be NSW and you can see that this is going to start listening for messages from the same queue. So if I switch back into the console and refresh here, you can see now we have two instances. So that's the two instances that's now looking at the exact same queue. So a message coming into this queue will be only picked up by one of these consumers. Now even if the message is getting broadcasted by the fanout exchange to this multiple queues, since this queue has multiple consumers, only one of them is going to pick that up and process the message. So let's see that in action. So let's navigate back. Let's send a message, weather alert. Let's ignore the routing key. And you can see this message was picked up by only one of these consumer that's looking at the NSW queue. So if I was to send again, so let's specify test. And this time the other consumer has picked up the message. The QLD consumer has only one consumer, which is why all of them is getting processed by this single consumer. Now, if we were to turn off one of these consumers, so let's turn off the QLD consumer. And if we send more messages, so let's specify test one, test two, etc. These messages are going to get piled up in the QLD queue, waiting for the consumer to come back online. So if I navigate back into the RabbitMQ console and let's go into the queues section and here you can see in QLD queue we have two messages ready to be picked up. So if I was to send more messages that is going to come up in this queue as well. So if I refresh this you can see this will be now three. So as soon as the consumer comes back online so let's specify .NET run that's going to run this consumer and pick up the messages from the QLD queue and start processing them. So you can see all those messages were successfully processed now. And if I switch back, you can see this has now gone back to zero and waiting for more messages. In future videos, I will be exploring the other exchange types and use cases of RabbitMQ. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button so you will be notified when those videos come out. If you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.